uh, I had some prepared remarks, but I'm not going to use them because um, what I really wanted to let you all know, and I, I came out here to see all the folk around here and all of you out there to say thank you. Um, I think nobody knows what important an effort this was any better than all of you. Uh, for many of you, you know, what we did in the last few weeks fulfilled a dream. And for some of you, it was a lifetime dream. I, I think some of you have heard me say before, I'm not one of these people that dreamed all my life about going to space. I, I didn't grow up that way. I, I was one that did not believe I could do that. So I kind of fell into it. But as I look through this crowd, there's some of you that that's something that you've dreamed about all your lives. And, and they have happened what happened when Dragon made its way to the International Space Station. And most importantly, as I told Elon and Gwen, when we got close, you know, people always say the hardest part is the last hundred yards. And, uh, and once again, that was exhibited uh, when Dragon went to station. But the critical thing was that was when we stopped being two teams. Uh, there was no SpaceX team and NASA team. I think there was an American team that came together, uh, managed to get the vehicle to station where we knew it belonged, uh, got it berthed, got everything offloaded and unloaded and all that. And that's the culmination of all your efforts. So I am incredibly proud to be here to thank you. Um, you know, the President's given us an opportunity in the face of a lot of adversity, to be quite honest. He's given us an opportunity to set up to blaze a new trail in terms of space exploration. So, you know, when, when you all are my age and you can sit down, because I don't see anybody here that, that looks <laughs> like they're anywhere close to you. Know. <laughs> well, where's, when, where's, where's Joe? When you all, when you all, <laughs> Joe, you got a grandkid yet? A bunch. A bunch? Well, you know, Joe and I, as we sit with our grandkids in the rocking chair, uh, you will be able to tell them about what happened over the last few weeks. And, and you're going to tell them about, I was there, and this is what we did. Because what we did as a team was historic. It's the first time that a private company has ever done what you all did. And that's a big, big deal. And so you need to feel very proud about it. Um, I, I bring greetings from a lot of people in Washington. Who's here from, used to be with Marshall? I know there's there's one rocket engineer that Robert Lightfoot. Oh, <laughs> All right, what's your name? Nikki. Nikki. Yes, That's right. Robert Lightfoot tells me to tell you hello. <laughs> hey, this this guy. How many of you know? Does everybody know Nikki? Yeah. <laughs> Senator Director at Marshall and is now the Associate Administrator. The number, I mean, he's the senior civil servant at NASA. Uh, Robert said when Nikki left him and came to SpaceX, he knew that it was real. So, um, you know, there, it's people like Nikki and it's other ones of you who come from other communities that are going to help us slowly, um, you know, discard the, the people who are non-believers and who are detractors. And you just, you just got to hang in there and continue to do what you do. Um, you just, you, you flung the door wide open when you completed the successful Dragon mission this time. Um, we're ready to go now as soon as everybody finishes all the evaluation of data and everything. Uh, hopefully let you all start earning some real money. Uh, <laughs> on providing a service to the International Space Station, which is what the President wanted us to do. He wanted NASA to get out of the business of access to lower orbit and hand it off to private industry that we're very confident can be done. And you've demonstrated that. So we're ready to get on with that. I know you all are off to other things now that I can't talk about, uh, but you know what they are. And so all, all I can say is, you know, I, I wish you the best of luck. you, you got to work really hard. Uh, don't let up. Um, you know, for the American public that, that doesn't even know this place exists, or at least didn't know until today, hopefully uh, they will. I don't want to bring a lot of people out here, you know, because then the neighbors will get angry and all that kind of stuff. But at least they know, uh, you know, they know that there is a McGregor, Texas now, and they know it because of all of you. So again, and, you know, I just, I can't thank you enough for allowing us to be a part of your team. Uh, so, and wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do want to say one more thing because it's. Um, you know, you look at the vehicle, this thing's been in space. How many of you realize that? <laughs> I mean, has it sunk in yet? You know, when, when we used to fly shuttles and I would 
where's David Weaver? David Weaver's right. back there, my right. communications director. Right. Take a picture. I'd always have an opportunity to take people out on the runway and walk them under the vehicle. And some of you who've been with NASA before know, you know, when you walk under the vehicle and you realize, boy, an hour ago, that thing was in space. You all should come over here, if you haven't already done it, a couple of times, and just walk around and say, you know, a couple of, couple of weeks ago, that thing was in space. And it's now back here, and it's intact, and it doesn't look a lot different than it looked when it left. You know, it's got some scars and stuff, but that's the price you pay for uh, getting 3,000 degrees. You know, it, it, it takes a little, little wear and tear. But for all intents and purposes, that is a great-looking vehicle. And so you all should be incredibly proud of what you've done because, um, you know, just this has done something that not a lot of things get to do. And until you all did this mission, no other private company had ever been able to bring somebody in somewhere and show them a vehicle that had been to space and back and had brought stuff back with it intact. So uh, I've talked enough. Again, thanks very much and congratulations. Thank you. It's like just add rockets to the list of 
you know, what does it look like? <laughs> I think that, 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 that seems like a reasonable request. <laughs> like, you can't sue someone because somebody's got a loud lawnmower next door, right? Um, so, but rockets don't have that protection, so we, we've got to have a little, just something like that. Um, yes, that, that would be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, but I, I, think that, I think that may be changing, so I, I don't want to presuppose that uh, Texas would not uh, be just as, as um, forward as, uh, as other states in this regard. Because um, I, I think, I think that, that, that may very well change. So. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I'm really proud of the, the work of, 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 of uh, the SpaceX team and partnership with NASA. It's uh, really, you know, this has been, um, uh, this is our baby, and back back from space. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, I feel like a proud father. I don't know. It's, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> and my second question is, are, are you prepared for another launch? Um, yeah, we're, we're um, in fact, the, the, the uh, rocket for the next launch is already at uh, Cape Canaveral. Um, and the, uh, the, the next spacecraft is, is uh, almost uh, fully built, and, and that'll be transferred transfer to the Cape soon. Um, so um, we're just working with NASA to figure out what the exact right timing is for the next launch, but we're, we're ready to go with, within, within months. So seeing how this launch went and looking at the space were you ready to go up and do this thing? Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is pretty robust. I mean, you look at this thing, it's, yeah, it's built up, you know? Um, so we're... we're, we're and we were really trying to make sure that it was um, it was designed to, to well in excess of what uh, of, of the environment that we experience in, in space and on reentry, and um, we can actually refly this spacecraft almost untouched. Um, so it's uh, so I think the fact that it's demonstrated this robustness is um, I, I think uh, pretty helpful in, in, in preparing for future crew missions, like that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I feel pretty comfortable on, on this vehicle. Um, sure. So, um, <clears throat> well, the, the uh, uh, I, I do think it's very important to, to figure out reusability of rockets. Um, that's uh, that's that's probably the, the biggest um, long-term initiative that that we have, the most important one. Because um, if you look at the cost of propellant for a mission, or cost of you know, fuel, oxygen, and so forth, um, it's only about 0.3 percent of the cost of the flight. So, if one can figure out how to um, effectively reuse the rockets, um, just like sort of an airplane, then um, the cost of access to space can drop dramatically, maybe by as much as a, a factor of 100. Um, and, um, and so that, that's, the, that's, that's, that's the most important thing that, that I think really we need to figure out, uh, or somebody needs to figure out. And, um, and we'll see the beginnings of that with our, our grasshopper project, which is both the takeoff and landing post stage. Um, you can see it if you look, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's. Just got the door and look that way. You'll see it, <laughs> like the, the first sort of test article. Um, of course, since this is never, you know, a fully reusable vehicle has never been done before. We had the space shuttle, which was partly reusable, um, but, but in fact, the, the reusable elements were were so, were so difficult to refurbish that it actually um, ended up costing more than an expendable vehicle. Um, but the, the principle, I think, was, was was the right one. And we just we just need to give, give it a um, another try, and um, and but but like I said, I think that that really is the fundamental breakthrough that's needed for uh, to, to revolutionize access to space is is a, a, a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. So that's that's going to be our main thing. Um, but it's uncertain how long it will take to achieve that. And then on a on a separate track, this this the upgrading um, Dragon to uh, carry uh, NASA astronauts, which we're very excited about. When I've had personal experience with this shuttle, and I can't because it has a totally different purpose, to be quite honest. And uh, why, why is it the only thing I've seen with shuttle? I don't think it's a fair comparison. Shuttle was, uh, you know, as Elon said, it was created to be a reusable vehicle winged vehicle to land on a runway and do kinds of things and, and our modules not designed the same way. So 
it, it's not a, I don't think it's a fair comparison. What is, what is a fair comparison is its ability to get things to space and then bring them back. That is a capability that, that we did not have until Dragon uh, successfully completed its mission after shuttle. You know, we don't have another vehicle that we can use to bring things back. Uh, the Russians have vehicles, they have Soyuz that takes, takes our crews up, but Soyuz has a very, very, very limited um, return capability for cargo. This has a, has a huge capability, and so that's a great advantage. And I think that would be, that would be the comparison. But it's obvious just by looking at it that it's not, it's not fair to try to compare two di totally different uh, classes of vehicles. Before you came here, did you have an expectation about how it would look? Um, Is it a good Oh, sure. I, but, but you got to understand, I've, you know, I've seen pictures of it. I've seen everything else. I've seen spacecraft that go to space and come back. And I had an opportunity to see the first uh, Dragon that flew in September of, um, December of 2010. Um, and so I, I, I had a, an expectation. It looks better than I thought, to be quite honest. Uh, you get the vehicle gets pretty beat up during reentry, and so um, I, I guess I would agree with with Alan when he talks about the robustness of the vehicle. Um, it, it's it's impressive. It looks well, if you look at it, you know it's not it, it's not it's charred back on the back, which is what you would expect, depending on the attitude it was in when you come. But um, I mean, it looks like if you dusted it off or cleaned it up, you could go fly it again. You wouldn't have to do a lot of things. Now, that's, that, you know, that's, that sh that's a, um, what is it? That's a very trivial statement for me to make because the folk around here know there's a lot of work they have to do and a lot of examination they have to do and everything before they can certify that it's ready to fly again. But, but just to the, to the naked eye and a, and a preliminary evaluation, you know, it, it looks great, to be quite honest. I have a question myself. Any veterans here in the crowd? <laughs> hey, thank you all very much for your service to the country. And I, I, I had another thing I wanted to say. You know, the president and I are really pushing to get companies to hire veterans. So raise your hands one more time. This is incredible to look at the, the number of veterans in this company. So I, my, my plea to other companies uh, is to follow the example of SpaceX. This is really great because we've got some incredibly talented young men and women who are coming back from serving our nation and, and want to take their place alongside some of you. So if you've got friends that are still in the military or getting ready to get out, tell them you got a place for them to come work and let Elon talk to them. But, uh, but we need to hire more veterans, so that's a, just a plug for them. Uh, Elon is a marine thing. He just said, wow, we have a lot of marine <laughs> <laughs> Planning on adding more jobs to this facility? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We expect to grow uh, quite a bit in the coming years. So, um, I, mean, I would certainly expect um, up here in the next several years to have several several hundred uh, direct jobs uh, added in, in McGregor. Um, and then, of course, there's, a, there's an amplification factor. So, if, um, if every employee that we hire, they obviously you know, they bring a family um, and it, the, it generates jobs in terms of uh, uh, automobiles, housing, you know. Uh, plumbing, electricity, hotels, restaurants. So, so the, usually the, the people apply kind of a, 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 five, a five X multiplier in terms of the, the job, job creation. So effectively it would, would result in a balance of jobs in, in the in the um, Waco area of the next years. I have one more question. First, assuming you don't fly this thing again, where are you going to end up? Oh, uh, actually, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, so, um, I mean, right now, we thought, well, maybe this we can um, leverage this to uh, uh, on the ed educational front. So, send it maybe on a tour of the country, um, get kids uh, interested in space, excited about studying engineering. That that seemed like that might be a good purpose. The the new facility that you want to build, how does it compare to something like a Spaceport America in New Mexico? Uh, well, um, what we're talking about would be uh, an orbital launch facility, whereas. Um, in New Mexico, it's a suborbital. So it's basically, suborbital is you, you just kind of go up and you fall down, uh, but orbit is you go up and you stay up. So it's, it's sort of this, you've got a, a ground track that, um, you know, that, that uh, you, you, when you're orbiting the Earth, so you're circling the Earth. Um, that, that's why it kind of has to be on the coast, because um, you know, if, you're, if you're overflying a lot of cities, which you need to do to get to orbit, 
um, then uh, you, you're putting people at risk. That's why an inland uh, launch facility for an orbital space flight is, um, is very difficult uh, to, uh, to do and still achieve, uh, and still be safe for people on the ground. Um, so it would be certainly at, at, a, at, a, at a much more significant level than, than what is occurring in New Mexico. Okay, so the uh, question was about Falcon Heavy, which is, um, so Falcon Heavy <coughs> is, uh, uh, uses two additional stretch, uh, two, two, two Falcon 9 first stages, which are stretched and then added as side boosters. And this is important in order to carry uh, the, the large commercial um, and military satellites. And um, so very, very important uh, from, from a launch uh, business model standpoint. Um, and, and also, uh, I think very importantly, provides an opportunity to, uh, to send a, a NASA uh, scientific missions deep into the solar system, uh, because Falcon Heavy will, will have about twice the payload, payload capability of, of any other operational vehicle currently on, on uh, in the world. So it'll be about twice the power of a Delta IV Heavy or a Proton, uh, which means that if you want to send probes to, say, uh, you know, Pluto, or perhaps even be outside of the solar system, then this um, this has the, the ability to do that. Um, and we'll start um, initial tests of, of Falcon Heavy hopefully towards the end of this year in terms of, of ground ground firings. Uh, and we've got the, the huge uh, test stand that we're, we're building, which you may have seen, um, and that uh, uh, that's going to be very exciting. Uh, so uh, I, know, I know in Texas people like like to do things big. And so this should really appeal to, to, to the people of Texas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
because uh, our first launch vehicle that we made, the Falcon 1, uh, the first three flights did not reach orbit, and they failed to reach orbit, so it was a very difficult time. And, um, uh, that, that, and, and in 2008, we had our third sort of failure to reach orbit with Falcon 1, and, um, and, and simultaneously with that, the, 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 uh, the uh, world economy was going into a tailspin, and, uh, and I, I was personally running out of money. So uh, it was kind of grim. Uh, but fortunately, the, the fourth flight of Falcon 1 worked, and, and it's also the all flights have worked. Um, so I think it shows that we, we did learn from our mistakes. Um, you know, as the saying goes, you, you can learn quite a bit from failure. Um, although I, I, I do like to point out that I think you can learn even more from success, <laughs> and it's a lot more pleasant. <laughs> but failure goes to the territory. Uh, well, yeah, this, it's, it's, it's a really tough business, and, and um, yeah, rock, rockets are very hard. I mean, there's a reason that there are um, idiomatic expressions of, or, um, about the difficulty of rocket science, and um, it's because they're true. Uh, this is a, it's, it's very, very tough, and um, so, and, and in fact, in the future, I certainly wouldn't want to predict that our, our missions will all be successful. I'm sure at some point there will be missions that, that don't succeed. Um, sure. Look at it. I was hoping Elon would say it, so he did. And I know the folk over here understand this, but everybody else does. This is this is risky stuff we do. Uh, it's hard. And uh, you know, as Elon has told you, I, I like to when I talk to people, I tell them I've lived through triumph and tragedy, um, and it comes. It, it does. It comes with this game, um, and it's tough. The the fact that you've had 30 successes and then you have a failure. Uh, the failures are really hard to take, but what's important is that you stick to it. Uh, you know, you're persistent and you don't give up because you realize that, as Elon said, you're going to learn from the failure and you're going to come back and you're going to be better than you ever were. Uh, that's just the way it works. So, you know, for people who want to, who are waiting for something bad to happen, uh, you know, forget about it because it is going to, something bad is going to happen. When it happens though, a team like this is very resilient and they just bounce back and they come back bigger and better than ever. And that's what I expect here. So NASA's in this for the long run. You know, I, I, like I said, it's a team. And, uh, and so for you all, we're not gonna give up on you. Uh, you're, you're doing incredibly well. Stay focused, uh, you know, stay intense. And, but of all things, Continue to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, that's what's most important. As long as you enjoy it, you're going to do well. So uh, have fun. Don't listen to other people on the outside. <laughs>